thank you. Um, welcome back, everybody. Um, now, this is uh, scheduled. It's called a round table. So I want you to imagine that we're all sat round a round table. The point being is that this is uh, intended to be an interactive session where we want to look at um, uh, and get your views on the conference, any particular questions you have that we may be able to answer, and to start to think about what happens next. Um, what events do we want? What topics do we want to research? So we'll, we'll go into that. Um, but uh, first, um, I mean, you've heard from me already uh, twice in the past two days. I'd like to introduce Dr. Richard Wittmann from the Orient Institute, who will uh, open our session today. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Bishop. Thank you all for staying, and uh, thank you for having me here. It's a wonderful opportunity for this group to uh, share some of the uh, ideas about research in the spheres that we've had at the Orient Institute and some of the uh, topics that I think very nicely overlap between our two institutions. What makes the work of the Levantine Heritage Foundation, I think, unique is that it serves as a bridge. It serves as a bridge between the families whose roots lie in this part of the world and the academic community. This is something very rare, and I will, in a second I will tell you a little more why I think this is crucial for the kind of work we are doing. Before that, I also wanted to uh, mention two or three topics where I think um, I, I could see um, a, a chance to, to further uh, widen the scope in the future. One is has to do with terminology. And I think uh, until now we've had a very nice development, a, a constant widening of the term Levantine. <laughs> From yesterday's talk, uh, which uh, referred more or less to a very classical understanding of Italian, Catholic, uh, speakers of Greek, uh, forming the core element of the Levantines to a more wider uh, uh, Levantine community of last in the 19th century, which includes many nationalities. What was also added today, I think, was um, were, were different strata, different social strata. Not only the entrepreneurs in the buildings that you, you know, the, the festive, uh, impressive buildings that may still exist today that we can visit, but also uh, artists, uh, teachers who struggled to make a living here, had to work at different uh, institutions at the same time. And I'd like to suggest to even go one step further by, um, and uh, we've had a similar suggestion already in the, late, in the latest panel, to, to, um, to look at zones of contacts, areas in which the Levantines, not being an isolated community, uh, shared their daily experience with many other communities. We heard a very interesting talk about the schools in, uh, in Istanbul, and we know that these schools were frequented by members of many different communities, many Levantines, but also Turkish Muslims, Jews, uh, foreigners of all sorts. And it would be interesting, in my view, to explore that a little further. Uh, what kind of areas of context did we have? Uh, some, some other uh, such uh, context zones had already been mentioned. The Circle d'Orient. Uh, people worked at a professional life, they worked in companies together with colleagues of different backgrounds. For instance, recently I saw a very interesting uh, chart of the employees of the Osmanli Bankers. What an international operation. Um, we have the, the cultural association, the Büyük Club in Istanbul, which had members from many communities. And then also, um, it seems to me, uh, if one studies the 19th century, and uh, this in many respects is a particularly interesting phase of the Levantine community, to, it seems to me that it was also a melting pot of refugees from, uh, of, of people from all sorts of uh, 
backgrounds coming from, we've already heard about the Poles, the Hungarians from Russia, but also uh, people who uh, came here because they want to build a better life. And America was too far, so they thought uh, their luck here in, uh, in Istanbul. Uh, tomorrow there will be the visit of the cemetery, and there you can see how diverse the community actually was. Um, I don't know if it's only a tour of the Catholic part or, or the Protestant part, but in the yeah. Protestant part you have it even nicely uh, sorted by countries. And if one reads the stones closely, one will be surprised to find names frequently that wouldn't fit your expectations. A Greek name in a, in a Swedish grave, uh, an Italian name in a German grave. So you can already get an idea from the, reading the stones what a diverse community this was. Um, one thing that I think uh, we could do together as descendants of the Levantines, as the Levantine Heritage Foundation, with the support of sponsors like the Belediere of, of Beolo, but also other uh, institutions such as uh, the British Consulate General, um, is to, uh, to, take, to, to take good use of the opportunity to preserve uh, as much as we can of the testimonies of the Levantines. Now we are lucky we still have members of the Levantine community, but uh, this community is shrinking. Fewer and fewer Levantines, unfortunately, live in this part of the world. So soon uh, we can study the history of this community uh, no longer through personal contacts. We will be able to to study the buildings of a select group of Levantines who left uh, traces that are visible still today. Uh, but I would also like to suggest something else, and this, this goes to a research area uh, that we, that's become a new focus at our institute. These are the personal testimonies of the Levantines and other uh, residents of the Ottoman Empire. What do I mean by that? I mean uh, letters diaries, autobiographies, memoirs, all these texts that were produced by people who, used, who, who lived here. Because I'm, I'm an Ottoman historian by, by, by training, and if you read the standard history books, you'd be surprised how little uh, the, the minorities, the non-Muslims actually figure in the official accounts. This has to do um, largely because of the base of sources that have been used by, by, uh, uh, by our historians. For many decades, it was considered to be the most proper work for, for a historian to go to the archives. And then you would find the official documents produced by the state's bureaucracy. But this is only one side of the story. Yes, of course, you also have members of uh, the Levantines there, but they're not so easy to find. But the texts that were produced by the Levantines themselves by other communities, the Greeks, the Jews, the Muslims, they're still out there. And by and large, they're in the possession of the families up to this day. So one thing that we as a research institute uh, can offer is to support the research into these texts, to provide platforms for publications of these texts. And I personally have uh, benefited greatly from the effort, efforts of the Levantine Heritage Foundation, where some of these texts have been put on the web page. I think there's a wonderful service. Um, but uh, this is the area of preservation. I think the next step would be not only to preserve these texts, which is really urgent and crucial, and I think something that uh, should be a joint effort, but to take these texts, research them, compare them to similar texts, uh, hold con conferences on subjects that are part of uh, what we've been discussing uh, in the past two days, more specific perhaps, and uh, then enable research into the context so the experience of the Levantine community will enter the actual historiography of this country. Not only this country, this region, the successor states of the Ottoman Empire. These are just some of the uh, um, thoughts that came to my, my mind. And uh, I hope this provides a little food for thought. And 
uh, one one uh, tiny remark that uh, I think uh, I should also make. One of the one, another way in which we support the the research and the and the contribution of the Levantine community has been that we've had a first postdoc position at our institute to research uh, the Levantine uh, um, traditions in this country. Uh, this was organized together with the German Historical Institute in Rome. And this, I think, has worked very well. And I'm proud to say that Marie Mozart has been one of the speakers today. And uh, we hope to continue this. Okay. Excellent. Uh, Richard, uh, thank you very much. Um, now, uh, I hope we have one or two microphones uh, available in the audience. Um, so, uh, while that's being prepared, um, what I'd like to do next is uh, to first talk about this conference and get some feedback and, and uh, you know, how did you feel it went, Were, was it what you expected, were the topics of interest, what would you like to see differently. Um, then we'll talk about um, topics for the future that you'd like to learn about um, and uh, you know, the types of events that would interest you most. Um, and Richard's already spoken of the importance of collaboration. So the collaboration between um, different organizations, the collaboration between academics and individuals amateurs, family members who hold records. Um, so let's start with um, you know, voices from the floor, um, you know, reactions to this conference, um, you know, anything that you, you feel you'd like to say. Who would like to um, start, start us off? So was everyone entirely happy with the conference? I'll take that as a... Yes, but if you weren't, we'd like to know, because we want to know how to improve. Um, this is an experiment for us as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, Trick Fabian, the DGV band of Milabante, and the contact in this structure. Uh, LHF is tolerant. Dikkat ettiyseniz bir akademik yönlü çalışmalarınız olacak. Bir de networking olayı yapmak istiyoruz. Yani bu networking ne olacak? Büyük bir ihtimal 100 sene önce Levantenlerin organize etmiş olduğu geceler. O konseptleri organize etmeye çalışacağız. Ee, Fabio ile ve LHF İST grubu ile bunları düşünmeye başladık. Yaklaşan tabi Aralık ayında e, Noel var. Acaba diyoruz bir Noel yemeği mi yapma, yapsak? E, İleride Mart ayında, Şubat ayında e, Paskalya'ya giriş, oruca giriş dönemi var. Bütün Avrupa'da Mardi Gras dedikleri bir e, karnaval olayı düşünüyoruz. Yani bunlar hep böyle yüksek sesle konuşulan brainstormingler. Ama e, yani networking olayı da çok önemli. Yani sadece akademik kalmamalı diye düşünüyoruz. E, yani buraya gelenler, genelde bu kültürü tanıyanlar, bu kültüre aşina olanlar ya da Levantan arkadaşları olanlar. Dikkat ederseniz çok az devam, yani belki hiç Levanten gelmedi değil mi Fabio? Dün iki üç tane Levanten geldi ki daha var. Yani, e, bütün bu şeyi tekrardan yaşatmaya çalışacağız. E, ondan dolayı hem akademik hem social networking e, alanlarında çalışmak istiyoruz. Ve bu nedenden dolayı Fabio'nun sunumunun sonunda bizim Facebook, e, İstanbul'daki yerel Facebook, daha doğrusu yerel grubun Facebook hesabı vardı. İstanbul Levantenleri Tire ve Çefis diye. Siz e, muhakkak, e, yani buradaysanız demek ki kültüre aşınasınız, kültür seviyorsunuz. Başvurun, kapalı bir grup ama Fabio Administrator hemen e, sizi alacaktır. Şu anda kaç? 200-250 kişilik bir, 260-270 kişilik bir katılımcı var. Ama bu tabii her geçen sene bunu çoğaltmak istiyoruz. Yani çünkü ee, sadece İstanbul'dakilerle değil, daha sonrasında yurt dışında olanlar, yani buradan gidenler, yerleşenler, Kanada'da, ben Kanada'da okudum, Kanada'da Levantan tanıyorum. Ee, İtalya'da da gözüme çarptı, zaten Marsilya'da da var, Yunanistan'da da var, İngiltere'de de var. Ee, hepsini bunları tekrardan toparlayıp, yavaş yavaş bir, nasıl derler, bir, bir grup kurmak istiyoruz. 
Tabii bu bugünkü kick-off yani kilometre taşının birinci ayağıydı. Böyle bir yol haritamız vardı. Bu yol haritanın e, tüm kilometre taşlarını yapmaya çalışacağız. İyi ya da kötü. Tabii bu yani finansal ihtiyacımız var. Bizim muhakkak yani bir tür desteklemeniz lazım. Var oluşunuz da zaten bu başlıyor. Ondan sonra çok çalışmak lazım. Daha başındayız. Ya yani akademi yönü de çok önemli çünkü gittikçe işte konular üzerine araştırmalar yapılıyor ve neler öğreniyoruz ya yani biz bir de ki Levantemiz. Dün ben de bir şey öğrendim bugün de çok şey öğrendim ve bunu yani İstanbul'da yaşayan herkesin bana gelebilmesi kültürüne bir şey kadar. Ben daha fazla bir şey söylemek istemiyorum. Sadece bu Facebook muhakkak Facebook hesabımıza şey yapın, gelin. Ve emin olun ki daha devam edecek bu faaliyetler. Hem akademik yönde hem social networking yönde. Peki. İstanbul Levantenleri tire LHF ist. Kapalı bir grup. Request yapıp daha sonra Fabio tarafından kabul edileceksiniz. Biraz vakit alabilir. Ama e, yani aramızda görmeyi çok istiyoruz sizleri. Ve cidden çok teşekkür ediyoruz. Yani çok güzel bir şey burada olmanız bizim için e, kültürümüze yakın olduğumuzu hissetmek bizi çok sevindiriyor yani. E, yani Fabio'da ben de başka Levent'ten tam olarak işte Craig'ler, Quinton'lar bir de tabii Nuri abi var, Sevva abi var yani çok yardım Emin abi var yardımcı olanlar ve bu kültürü tekrardan yaşatmaya çalışanlar çünkü harbiden zenginlik katan bir kültür yani biri şey demişti Francesca Weyland'ın videosunda hem batılıyım hem doğuluyum. Ben bunu yaşadım. Ben İstanbul'duyum, Kanada'da okudum. Ee, Lübnanları, e, Orta Doğuları hemen arkadaş olabiliyordum. İtalya'da hemen İtalyanlarla kaynaşabiliyordum, İngilizlerle kaynaşabiliyordum. Yani şu İstanbul'da Levantan olmak büyük bir zenginlik. Bu zenginliği de biz yani insanlara geçirme, deneye geçirmeye çalışıyoruz. Çünkü harbiden belki Türkiye'nin e, nasıl derler, ihraç edebileceği şey insan kaynağımız bugün Amerika'da yani. Yüz yıl önce Osmanlı böyleydi, şimdi Amerika böyle. Adı bir basıyorsunuz, beş tane dil bilen nesiller var yani her şeyi bilen. Bence Türkiye'de böyle bir şey çıkarabilir tabii. Sadece Levanten kültüründen değil ama uzun vadede insan kaynağını yurt dışına şey yapıp high profile executives yani ne bileyim uluslararası ilişkilerde önde gelen harici çıkarabilir. İşte bu Kültür düzeni yüz yıl önce bir şeyler yapmaya çalıştı, biraz söndü. Tekrar yaşatmak tabii gerçekçi olmak lazım, bir anda bakacak değiliz. Ama yaşatabiliriz diye düşünüyorum. Ama en büyük destek siz olacaksınız. Teşekkürler. Thank you, Mara. Ben Mara'nın söylediğine yani bıraktığı noktadan alıp iki şey daha eklemek istiyorum. Ee, birincisi, bu konu, yani bu 7-8 kişilik gönüllü grubunun 2-3 aylık çalışmasıyla çıkmış bir toplantı. Yani ne kadar küçük bir grupta ne kadar büyük bir şey yapılabileceğinin bir örneği olarak söylüyorum bunu. Daha büyük bir grupta çok daha büyük ve ciddi işler yapabileceğimizi düşünüyorum. Bunun için bizim aslında networking dediği Mario'nun Mario Levantenler'in networkinden söz etti. Bu gelişen daireler olarak bakıyorum ben networkinge. Ve burada iki tane daha üzerinde durulmaya değer daire olduğunu düşünüyorum. Bunun birincisi çok önemli akademisyenler. Bir ekonomik, sosyal, kültürel ve tarihi bir alan olarak Levantenler. Türkiye'de pek çok akademisyenin ilgi alanı olabilecek bir konu. Gerek doktora tezi, gerek master tezi, gerek doçentik profesörlük tezi olarak üzerinde çok çalışılıp çok ilginç sonuçlar elde edilebilecek bir konu. O açıdan belki bizim yapmamız gereken ilk şeylerden bir tanesi İstanbul'da 30'da 60'ı aşkın bir üniversite var. İstanbul'daki bu üniversitelerin e, ciddi tarih bölümü olanlarıyla temasa geçip buradan doğru öğretim üyelerini bulup bunları bir araya getirerek seferber edip bu konunun ciddi bir araştırılmasını sağlamak bir fikir olabilir. İkinci bir networking halkası ise bu şehirde 
Yani biz bu çağrıyı yaptığımızda çok kısa sürede ona yakın konsolosluktan ilgi gördük. Bütün bu konsoloslukların, ilgi gördüğümüz konsoloslukların hepsinin çok ciddi kültür ateşelikleri veya kültür merkezleri var. Dolayısıyla bizim levantenler konusunda bu kültür ateşeliklerini ya kültür merkezlerini seferber edip bu çalışmayı Türkiye'nin dışına seferber edip ya Türkiye'deki çeşitli insanları bu işe katıp daha iyi kaynak yaratmak yani hem bilgi kaynağı hem maddi kaynak yaratmak mümkün olabilir. Dolayısıyla aynen Mario dediğine katılıyorum bizim çeşitli networklerle çok ciddi bir ağ örerek bir net kurarak bunun etrafında seferber olmamız lazım. Bu konuda bize katkıda bulunabilecek herkesi e, bu arımıza basma hazırız. Onun için hepinizden katkılar bekliyoruz. Çok teşekkür ediyorum. Bütün konular çok ilginçti. E, ama e, sıradan genel kültürünü arttırmak için gelmiş bir olarak e, bizlerin de beklentileri var. Mesela bir dahaki e, en e, sevindirici işte yakında bu gariba değil açılıyor olması. Orada bu etkinlikler devam edebilir. Belki burada konuşulmayan konular konuşulabilir. E, temalar e, üzerine sunumlar olabilir. E, mesela ben şeyi çok merak ederdim. E, Yeşilköy'de bir büyük levanten mezarlığı var ve oturmuş büyük İstanbul meşhur Levanten aileleri var. Bu aileler tek tek tanıtılsın isterdim. Çünkü biz meşhurun ve Ermeni ailelerini artık biliyoruz, duyduk bütün benzersel konferanslarda. E, bu büyük binaları yaptıranlar, e, çok meşhur apartmanlar var, sahipleri biliyorsun Levantenler. Bunlar ne yapardı? Bu sebeklerini nasıl değerlendirdiler? Sarayla bir çiftliğe nasıldı? Parçalar çok yakın olan var mıydı? Bir Agop Köçeyan gibi parçalı tavlayla çiftliği var mıydı? Ayağına kadar getirip tiyatrosunu gösteren bir Naon Paşa var mıydı Levantinler arasında? Bir de bizim Levantinlerdenki çok küçük bir camiasınız, beklentimiz. Siz çok güzel karışık evlilikler yapmış, çok iyi bilen, dünyayı görmüş insanlarsınız. Biraz da siz bizim dogimizi yapın. Bakın siz onu da yakışarıyorsunuz. Bize alamayacağınız için gitmeyeceğiz. Bize alamayacağız. Biraz da politik, politik ticaret yapmayın. Biraz da politikliğe girin. Çok başarılı insan mısınız? Biz sizleri Avrupa politikleri, e, Avrupa gönlük politikleri arasında görmek isteriz ki biraz sizlik yapın. Olumlu bir olan yapın. Teşekkür ederim. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Pardon. So, Çok affedersiniz. Mesela affedersiniz. Feriköy'ün adı bir Müslü Feride'nin geldiğini hep duyarız. Feriköy. Bir köye adını vermiş. Adam avlandığı semti almış, adını vermiş. Mesleferi, bildiğim kadarıyla işin köylü bir Levanten. Bunları falan duymak çok daha hoşunuza gider diye düşünüyorum. Um, thank you. So, uh, you make a very important point about um, the extent of the resource and the relationships between the Levantine communities. And indeed, uh, quite a, a lot of that work has been started. So um, if I point to Marianne Marondé, um, so a, a study of the graves, the cemeteries, some of that data uh, has been collected. But the point is to bring it out, so to share it uh, for other researchers so that they can You know, make those connections and, and, and bring out the stories. Um, so a lot of this work is going on. Yes, we need to make it more available. A lot of it is already available from the Levantine Heritage Foundation. And increasingly, what we want to do is to bring it uh, to you and make it available. What we find uh, every week, of, you know, we get inquiries from individuals Um, seeking information. So they come to the contact email on the website and you know, we are very happy always to try and make the connections personally um, between the inquirer and any other researchers, be they amateur or professional academic, so that uh, you, know, you can continue your own studies. 
Um, so, and, and Craig uh, Engel here is someone who not only has the database, but he has a lot of it uh, up here. Um, the, the other point uh, about, uh, I suppose it's the bringing together of people from across nations. The, the challenge of the 20th and 21st century is that we have nations with borders. In, in, in the Ottoman Empire, the borders were non-existent and communication perhaps was easier in some ways. Um, now we have barriers to the movements of peoples and uh, you know, we're not a political organisation, I, I need to stress that. But clearly what we hope to do uh, is to bring people together because they share something in common, um, whether it is through family, whether it is through culture, or, or faith, or, or background. It, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter because it, they are all relevant in their ways. So, so I hope I give you encouragement. I don't mean to, you know, we're trying to be as open and, uh, and uh, as collaborative as possible. Anyone else with the point? Um, yeah. Thank you. 
was. Um, I think some of the comments went into a direction uh, that I want to also go into. Not only because we're in a cultural institution here, the Italian Cultural Institute in Istanbul, but also because um, I, I once wrote a book on the biography of the head of the Jewish community of Istanbul, and then became familiar with, to some degree, with the structure of the Jewish community in Istanbul. And I was very impressed by the efforts they took uh, connected to the celebrations of 500 years of Sephardic presence in this country in 1990, uh, this was in 1992, which started a whole program also of cultural awareness, creating a cultural awareness for the traditions of this particular community. Mm -hmm. The museum was open, the Jewish Museum, something that would be wonderful to have for the Levantine community. Uh, they started uh, an open house day once a year where the synagogues are open to the public, where you can hear music that uh, most people in Istanbul haven't heard in generations. And it led to a revival of, uh, of you know, the teaching of music, but also of the teaching of Judea Espanol, through the help, uh, by the way, of another cultural institution, the Spanish Cultural Institute in town. So I wonder if this would also be something, in addition to what has been said, that uh, <laughs> one could take first steps in such a direction. Be it that, uh, be the organization of uh, an exhibition of Levantine art, uh, the experience of uh, an, you know, an orchestra playing the musical pieces, some of the which we have seen here on the wall, some of the marches composed by Levantine uh, composers. I think this was something that would uh, communicate what being a Levantine uh, was about to a wider community. So, so I see that there, there are some general themes. So you know, Levantines and its relevance in the modern day, um, it, it would be one thing. There are themes of music, but also are you saying, you know, going down, looking more closely at, at specific communities as well? And I think you know, we do have to take the broad view and the narrow view because you know, the search in depth reveals some interesting things. Then it's for others to, to draw the threads together between the different pieces. Um, so I think that's a relevant uh, contribution. Um, any other points? Someone? Can I ask? Uh, so, can we go to. to Professor Mandela, 
used uh, a document uh, in which uh, Pope uh, John XXIII of America was in the, he was a Muslim writer in, uh, in the 1930s. In 1935, he wrote to the Vatican saying that the new Republic of State was not anti clerical it was a state that respected all the religions, even though the Catholics, as an Irish Muslim, had not to use the garments in public, etc. Et and as an example of this tolerance, he gives the uh, transformation of Arizona to the new Supreme So it, it's quite, uh, it, uh, also the early Republican period, I think, is full of nuances regarding the perception and uh, the assessment of its place of the identity, the Catholic and the Muslim presence. Is there any other Thank you. 
Gördüğüm oldu. Çok zeynep masalara ibaret olsun. Çünkü still open for more comments, but just if I can collect uh, a few things. Well, I'm, I'm trying to think of how do we take this forward? How do we take the ideas forward? Um, there seems to be an interest and demand in more research, more sharing of knowledge, more events. Um, and one suggestion has been that we have an annual conference like this here in Istanbul um, because there is so much content uh, that it goes, let's say, not just Pera but to the modern era, the relevance, and goes wider, you know, not just Bioru. Um, Istanbul is a very big place and 11 times and, and you know, we're, we're not just here. Um, as a practical step, is how do we prepare that program? How do we decide what to choose? Uh, and I think this is where we need you know, your help, and certainly that there is uh, you know, a need for, let's say, an academic group to help with the topics. But we mustn't have topics that are so ge that generalize things and miss the point that there has to be sufficient detail and sufficient quality so that the, the, the research is thorough, it's, it's well uh, carried out, and the, uh, the information that's produced is relevant. So um, I think as a, a next step, one of the things would be that those who are interested in helping us shape the academic program, if I can call it that, I don't want it to be so academic that it excludes people who are not academics, you know, because actually it's the individuals, many of them, who hold the records that the academics need. I hope I'm yes. correct in saying that. <laughs> and so, so my proposal is, and this is something for the Istanbul uh, Levantine Heritage Foundation, Foundation group to consider, is forming that sort of group that helps set up the themes, the content, the timing, and actually maybe to commission the research. You know, in collaboration, I mean, I'm not an academic, I don't know how these things are done, but you know, it, it seems to me that there are sufficient ideas, but they need to be put into a timetable. We, they need to, people need to take responsibility for them. And we need to identify the resources to help the work to be carried out. Now, I think if we can do that, then it is a, a good thing that we can communicate to our sponsors and supporters so that you know, they say, yes, you know, this makes a, uh, a sensible program. D does that, do people agree that that's a sensible approach? Or does anyone disagree? Let me start it that way. Any, any disagreements? Because I'm trying to find the next practical step. So, uh, yes, to Alan uh, Mellart. Uh, do you have the microphone, please? Um, uh, thank you very much. Um, I've been listening to, obviously, all the feedback. Um, I would just like to, to offer one, let's say, assistance. I have one, you know, I know it's, it's um, a subject that is ongoing. I think the next um, conference, it would, be, it would be brilliant if somebody could make a presentation, even if it's not complete, if it's incomplete, on this subject of who are the Levantines. And starting maybe a thousand years back, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't have to be so thorough but why people came to you know, their major migrations due to wars or to you know, uh, uh, uh, 
religious wars in Europe or something happening in Russia. If somebody could even do a chronology, it would be so happy and missing things, but it would be so helpful and, and so interesting. I think it would be fascinating. Uh, and that would also lead perhaps to you know, somebody being very interested in how come um, like my grandfather, great grandfather came from Romania. Was it just economic? Was there, was, was there some you know, conflict in that country? I mean, obviously, I mean, you know, even a half an hour on the subject would be fascinating. Uh, uh, I, uh, regarding, I know it's I know it's an ongoing subject. I'm sure we were talking about it, um, but you know, I think it would attract a lot of attention. Regarding material in Turkey, I'm, I'm a member of. <coughs> Collection club where there are lots of collectors, and Matt is fabulous. He has a fantastic collection. I've known him for many years, and he's made a presentation on music. Um, uh, to in fact, our, I, I, did, I made a surprise wedding present uh, to my wife and invited a huge group, group of people, and he made a presentation on, on music. And, and he has so many different collections. But there are others who have collections, maybe covering Levantine cards, photographs, etc., etc. I'm not sure obviously what's on what you already have on, on registered, but I'd be happy to announce in my you know, other clubs this has it really got material on these on these matters and then I'll try and you know, help put them you know, forward and help to support the growth of, of, the, of the library. Okay, thank you. And we have had, at other events, a talk very similar to, to what you proposed at the beginning. So, you know, who are the Levantines? What's their history? You know, why do they exist? And actually, I suppose the point is, given all the debate and, and, and we had from yesterday about this topic, it should be, when we have new people joining us always, that we should always do an introduction like this. Mm. Uh, some of us probably always need reminding, but actually, for most of us, a little sort of a, you know, you know, a tour of, of the Levantine world and history is very useful. Now, I, I'm sure there will be a debate about um, you know, who are the Levantines, the people, what is Levantine heritage. I go to the broad Levantine heritage view, uh, but uh, I do think this is helpful. And it will always provoke debate, and debate is always good as well. So I think we'll take that suggestion, uh, and uh, yeah, I think what we will, we, we need to think how to do this. Um, there are you know, good academic authorities to, to speak on this, and, and it would be good if we were able to present, you know, give the opportunity to different uh, academics in this field to present you know, the history but also they're, they're, they're reading and understanding of it because um, you know, there is no single view and it's important that we offer a platform to all views. Um, thank you also about your point about sharing the information that uh, collections are important. I just want to add one other point. We have uh, a few of the people in our community who um, are thinking about legacy donations. So what do you do if your family may not be interested in your documents? The thing we must try to prevent is that they get thrown out at the end of a generation. Now, this has happened you know, too much over the years. Um, and you know, we wish that you know, the Levantine Heritage Foundation, in collaboration with other institutions that can provide a, a good home for these legacies. Um, you know, can, you know, we can promote these sort of donations. It's quite complicated because um, you know, one person's treasured belongings may not be you know, hugely valuable academically. Difficult to say until you actually see the material. But, but Richard, uh, <laughs> I mean, over the past 
generation of academics, at least just among historians. I mean, the, the history of the everyday life has become a really prominent theme. So there's really nothing that you could think of as being useless. And it's easy to digitize. There's always a documentary value, and it's especially the everyday life that we know so little about. Because we know about famous people like Fausto Sonaro, but do we know about his Italian-speaking neighbors? I, I totally agree, and it echoes to the point, I forget who made it, about getting into understanding the everyday life of, of, of Levantines, uh, because the detail is in there. So, please. Thank you, I think you made a very good We have a brief taste of this from doing Gav's uh, presentation. Uh, is that uh, all this will be an excellent medium uh, to start already uh, also inventorizing what kind of material there is and, uh, within uh, families and uh, number of uh, uh, Levitan descent, and also getting a better idea of what kind of material uh, might be under threat. That's not even mentioned, you know, the, uh, the great value there is in the oral accounts uh, that have not been documented in uh, what we might call the more traditional uh, documentation, like photography or uh, diaries, which are always possibly uh, come from a process of like, sort, of, sort of all transferability, but that they are documented. And we, I think, uh, to an extent, wrongly assume that that is more value than. I think this is a very good point, and I think once we know what materials are under threat, there are sometimes instruments provided by foundations or governments to preserve these holdings, but sometimes also much easier than if you abstractly speak about such texts to find a sponsor who would take responsibility and say, yes, this should be digitized, at least or this should be at least uh, put in an archive where it's preserved under proper conditions so it doesn't rot in somebody's basement or worse. So I think the inventory is really key for the next steps. Okay. okay, just to repeat, uh, so I think you were saying that there are records of uh, Sephardic Jew, Jews and, that, and you know, if we could find, make the links to some of these other organizations and, and try and, is that the point you're making? It's a way to become inspired maybe about methodologies that we could use, I think. Okay. Um, all right, I don't want to keep you much longer. It's been a long day. Um, uh, so I just want to um, say, you know, do stay in touch, and we will keep you informed of what we're doing. If you'd like to become involved in any way, you know, simply in the organization of events like these, networking events, uh, you know, to give you an example of what we do in London to bring people together so they get a chance to talk in smaller groups. Uh, we have our evenings uh, three or four times a year where we get one or two speakers and then we have an informal dinner. You know, it, it's, what, what, what is suitable for Istanbul is, you know, is really up to the group here. But we do find that that's a very helpful thing that keeps the dialogue going and brings you know, key people together. Um, so I would encourage um, you know, that sort of continuation, I think, as Mario has already suggested, that, that, that is going to happen. Um, I just want to, the last point I just want to say, um, we have a website, uh, levantineheritage.com, that a lot of people feel is useful. It is in English. It does have records in different languages. Um, and you know, one of the thoughts going through my mind is, is uh, how do we help to localize that so that 
it is perhaps uh, in Turkish and makes it more accessible, um, it, particularly in line of some of the discussions of the links to the modern era. Um, it is a resource issue, but maybe it's, I can throw it out as a challenge to the Istanbul group about how do we make this information more accessible to the local uh, uh, interested parties and, and communities. Um, any other suggestions like that, please you know, let us know. Because again, to, to, to go to, to Richard's point, you know, if we have specific projects in mind, it's easier to go to sponsors and say, we want to do this, it's going to cost so much, can you help us? Um, so please do feed in your suggestions. It doesn't matter which route you choose through the email on the website to one of the local members. Um, we'd be extremely grateful. Does anyone have any last points they'd like to raise? Um, no, in, in which case, I'm gonna say thank you very much. Uh, it, it's been very helpful. So I've made notes, as you can see. I'm going to feed them in uh, to the group and um, we will follow up uh, accordingly. So thank you again, uh, and uh, I look forward to seeing you all next year. Thank you.